Yo guys, what the hell is going on? This is CSS for Beginners Lesson 19. I'm Sean from the Net Ninja, and today we're going to talk about pseudo classes. That's coming up. <laughs> okay, so what exactly is a pseudo class? Well, there's a question. So essentially, pseudo classes are special keywords that go after selectors. That's important. They go after them. They're like an extension of selectors. And what they do is help us to target things we wouldn't normally be able to target with normal CSS selectors, okay? And these things could be things like special behavioral states on a web page or advanced structural elements. Okay, so let's have a look at those two groups in more detail. Now, they have names, those two groups, dynamic and structural. And strictly speaking, not all pseudo classes fit into one of these groups, but most of them do, okay? So the dynamic group, what are they? Well, they're based on behavior. So for example, when someone hovers over a link on your website, does it change color? That's all controlled by a dynamic pseudo class. And the structural group is more to do with selecting advanced structural elements, okay? Things you wouldn't normally be able to do with uh, normal CSS rules, for example, advanced or complex parent-child relationships, okay? So looking at dynamic pseudo classes a little more deeply, we've already said that it allows us to style an element in relation to user actions, okay? So that could be things like when you hover over a link, does it change color or underline it or do anything else to it? Or whether when a button is being pressed, does the uh, that button change? So when you click that little thing on your mouse to press a button, a submit button, what happens to that button? You know, do you give it an emboss or move it slightly or change the color? That kind of thing. Or whether a tick box has been checked on a form. You know those forms like um, when you're buying something online and at the bottom it's got a little tick box and it says if you do not wish to not 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 wish to not not join our mailing list, then do not 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 click here. Okay, so something like that. If you have one of those check boxes and you click it, you can use a dynamic pseudo class to make that check box display differently. Okay, that's all there is to it. So, what's the other group? Structural pseudo classes. Now, like we said, they're used to target more advanced structural elements that we couldn't normally do with normal CSS rules. Okay, so say you've got a UL list and you've got 10 li tags in that UL list and none of them have classes and none of them have IDs, so you can't target specific LI tags using that. The only way to target, say, the fifth tag, um, LI tag, or the seventh LI tag, would be to use a structural pseudo class. Or we could use um, a structural pseudo class to target a parent element on a HTML document that has no children. We could say we don't want to display that on the web page because it's got no children, there's, you know, there's no meat to it. So that's what structural pseudo classes are all about. So now we've got that out of the way and we know what those two groups are all about. We're going to jump into the code and look at the general syntax of pseudo classes. <laughs> okay, gang, I'm back here in the HTML and we're just going to look at the basic syntax for now. I'm not going to go into too much detail or give specific examples, just the basic syntax. Okay, and the way it works is this. You have your selector and let's just say it's a class. Okay, so you have your class, oops, your class. That would be a normal selector, right? Whatever the class name is. And we could style it. Now, the way we apply a pseudo class to this is by putting, first of all, a little colon. That there is saying that a pseudo class is coming up, okay? And then we write the pseudo class keyword. So whatever that might be, the keyword goes there, okay? So I'll give you a specific example. Say, for example, we want all the A tags, all the links on the web page, to change color when they're hovered over. Now, the way we do that is by putting it in A, first of all. That's how we normally select all the A tags. And then we'd use a pseudo class. So we put our little colon. And then the keyword for this one is hover. Now, you don't need to remember this now. I'm going to go into more detail about specific examples in later videos. I'm just showing you how it works now, okay? So that's our normal selector targeting all the A elements. And then we've got our colon signifying that we're going to use a pseudo class. And then this is our pseudo class keyword, hover and we'll change the color to red, okay? So let's save this, uh, let's see if this works. We'll open it in a browser. So there's our links and we'll hover over them. And yep, cool guys, they work, awesome. So that's about it for the general syntax. Um, you can do this with any selector, you know, you could do any ID, so main content, when you hover over that, I want it to change background color to red. Let's 
It's going to look stupid, but you get the idea. Okay, so if you have any questions about these pseudo classes whatsoever, uh, throw a comment down below. I'm going to answer all of those for you as soon as I can. If you enjoy these videos, please like them, uh, share them, or uh, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one.